valve adjustment for a Ferrari on a four cam, we have shims that sit in buckets. And if you look at the way the, um, the cams are, that turns and then basically pushes down on the valve, opens it. So that's basic understanding of what's going on. And the reason you have a valve clearance is because as the engine heats and grows or does whatever it does, you want a little clearance there. And yep. also it allows the valve to fully close for combustion, but it allows the valve to fully close against the seat for a long enough period of time where it can cool. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're actually, you know, part of it is not normal because we have a different shim in there, but we're gonna basically replace the shims. But what I really wanted to show everybody is basically how we get these shims out. So we got this so tool. this little scoop um, is, is wedge shaped, so you jam it. I give it a good thump with my hand to get the valve pushing down. And typically when the valve, when the cams are this position, you can push the valve open without worrying about hitting a piston. And then you gotta use this little Grim Reaper hook and that catches the edge of the follower it, and it misses the shim so that it holds it in holds place. It. Then we gotta get a mat, oh, Jesus. <laughs> and this, we're gonna edit all this out. You can see that this is getting, a maybe needs a little fresh dressing to sharpen it up. I'm gonna try the other one. Okay. Cam shaft is, it's pretty. Well, I'm just saying, I don't think I'm getting quite the right amount of, I'm pushing it down enough actually. It's kind of, there we go. Okay, so then once that tool is in place, it holds the bucket and then. then uh, theoretically, a magnet should lift it, but a lot of times there's a little suction. There, there's oil, oil. On, there's oil on the shim. There it is. So the shim's out. The shim's out. All right. And we know which one we have to put back Yeah, we've in. already, I've already done a valve adjustment, so I know which ones work. So we're just and gonna this put one we've marked on at seven exhaust, yeah. which is going in. So it drops right in there. And I like to just get Drop them in. get them in so they, they don't um, get bound up inside the follower. And then you do the re reverse. And that pops in and that's it. And then theoretically that clearance should be correct. point two, I believe, or whatever. I forget, we have to look at the lash, what the exhaust um, is. This one should be 12 thou. Perfect. All right, so that slides in and it, it slides in. The next one won't go in. So now we're going to the next one. Now we go to this guy. So you can imagine how frustrating this can be when you're doing uh, 24 of these things. And, to get these, uh, and especially if you're leaning over a fender, like doing it on a bench top is way a little more tolerable. And you can kind of move your head around to see and make sure you're really catch, catching the... Um, edge of the valve lifter, which the lifter is also, we also sometimes call it the bucket. And it's this uh, upside can, down bucket shaped. You see there's like a little notch in there. You can get a little pick in there and get it unseized because it's like I said, it's hydraulically holds in place because of the oil. But then the magnet should pull it out and then you carefully insert the other one because before this thing pops out, because like everything's kind of just under tension. You got the bucket out of place. And we labeled this number seven intake well, before. We took it out before, so, so we don't slide that back re in. Imagine our whole valve. Yeah. I mean, we're we're at an advantage here because it's already been done once, so we just pulled it out, which is replacing it. And we're gonna we're gonna double check our clearance just just sure. as a, just for peace of mind. Yep. Do that. Replace. Pop Boom. it, and it's in. All right. So that's basically what you have to do. But when you're doing a valve adjustment, luckily. You know, what I've done is on valve adjustments, generally they're pretty close. I mean, the exhaust tends to be, you know, you'll because they run hotter, you will get um, different exhaust checks. Or And what I do is I'll go through and check all the lash and then uh, make notes as to which ones you need to replace to make a thicker shim or a thinner shim and then uh, replace it. So sometimes there's not all 24. You still got to check all 24, but you, you don't necessarily have to replace all of them. And, and so the deal with it is that once we check it, we know what we're different. Let's say it's off by like, uh, you know, 0.03 or 4 or whatever it is. Then you actually have to get a replacement shim that's thicker or thinner, usually thicker. Um, no, let me think. If the valve comes up high, it's Something's thinner. thinner. It's thinner. It's not thicker. Uh, usually it goes thinner because the valve, if you think about it, goes further into the seat, then it gets taller, then you need to go And the valve shim. stretches a little bit. Right. I mean, um, and just FYI, sometimes we say valve lash 
valve lash, valve clearance, yep. and and um, you know valve clearance is the same thing. Right. So what you do is you end up with a bucket full of shims, and this is what we go through: is um, all the different shims are just point one or point oh five difference in thickness. So you're going to go everywhere from four millimeter, you know, to you know four or five millimeter, all the way down to two to two millimeters or two point nine five millimeters. And so you're you're measuring it and then doing the subtraction to figure out what it is that you need to put the correction to make that lash correct. Um, so yeah, I mean that's basically how you do a a, a valve a lash check and adjustment on on a four cam engine. And what makes a really good machine shop is when they get the valve height correct so that you're using shims that are within the range of shims that are available. Sure. I've seen a lot of times where they set they do a valve job and they, they cut the seats too deep. Yep. And then you're all at the minimum range of your valve shims, which really you would like to be at the thicker range, right. if anything, or in the middle of the range. And I've, I've so, so many times I've tried to put an engine together where <laughs> every you need yeah, every you single can. one of your one particular thickness yep. shim and they're all at the bottom of the range and you're like, ugh. Yeah. So this engine here, I think all of our shims are within the four. Right in the middle range, of the range, which right. is right in the middle of the right. range, which probably means it's a factory yep. set. Head. It hasn't been a part, and and that's the thing. It's again so many different variables. I mean, mm. the raw machine shop having the specs. You know, the, the Ferrari does have certain owners. I mean, so certain shop managers will show you the the valve heights and all that other stuff you need to know. But the machine shop that's doing the machine work. If they don't know and they're just cutting them and they're just doing willy-nilly and, and it's gotten new seats and all this, it, it really affects every, cascades down the way on everything about it's these It's amazing cars. any of this stuff works at all. Yeah. There are I mean, so and many, you think about it, there it's are like, so many moving pieces and... The head heights, all that stuff. Anyway, so that's that's the valve adjustment side of it and, uh, you know, we're going to keep moving on and, and getting the rest of this engine together.